last week on a Saturday evening, I was sitting with my dog on the couch. I had the TV on in the background as I sat there reading through the daily newspaper. I was looking in the ad section when I stumbled upon an ad stating, in search of employees that would and will be able to work the night shift. My eyebrows shot up in excitement. $28 an hour. Holy shit! That's good pay for a warehouse night shift job, I said as I giggled to myself. I got up and grabbed a notebook and pen and wrote down the number. I put the newspaper on the coffee table. I sat back down on my couch and flipped to channel 54. I sat there for the next few hours, flipping back and forth through the channels, trying to find something good to watch. It's getting late. I had better head to bed, I said to myself. I shut off the TV and started heading to the bathroom. I opened the bathroom mirror and grabbed out my toothbrush and toothpaste and began to brush my teeth. I then heard a strange noise coming from my bedroom. I froze for a second, but then started to walk into my room with my toothbrush still in hand. The noise is coming from the window. That's weird. Maybe it's a tree branch smacking against the window, I thought to myself. I walked back into the bathroom. I finished brushing my teeth and then proceeded to walk back into my room. I shut off the bedroom light and laid down in bed to fall asleep. I woke up the next morning in a cold sweat. I looked around in confusion. It almost felt like I was being watched. It didn't bother me much because I'm not the type to believe in the paranormal. I got out of bed and headed to the kitchen. I started making myself bacon and eggs for breakfast. I looked at the ad again and then took out the notebook and called the number to apply for the job. I was answered by a really nice man. Hello, this is the warehouse department. My name is Jack. How can I help you today? Yeah, hi. I was wondering if I could apply for the opening you guys have, I said sternly. Yes, you can, sir. Come down to the warehouse later today, and we will just interview you. There's no need to apply, he said in a cheerful tone. Oh, okay. I will be there at 4 p.m. Does that sound good to you? I said excitedly. Yes, it does, the man said. We said our goodbyes and hung up the phone. It was currently 9.43 a.m., so I had all day to get ready and relax a little bit. I sat down on the couch and flipped on the TV. I scrolled through the channels quickly until stopping on the History Channel. I sat there most of the time until 3.30 p.m. It was a decently long drive to the warehouse, probably 20 minutes, so I wanted to start driving early. I got dressed in a nice plaid button-up shirt and a pair of khaki dress pants. I grabbed my keys and headed outside to my car. I got into my car, took a deep breath, turned the key, and drove off. I got there right on time and saw the sign, Main Office. I parked my car as close as I could and started walking up to the door. I got in and the cool air-conditioned air hit me like a train. It feels nice here, I thought to myself, seeing it was a hot, stuffy summer day here in Florida. I was greeted by the man I had talked to on the phone. Hi, Jason. It's nice to meet you, he said. I smiled back at him and shook his hand. Nice to meet you too. He took me into a small little office and I sat down in front of his desk. All right, let's go over a couple of things here he said while pulling out a folder of papers. He started asking me all kinds of questions like, how far away do you live from here? Are you physically able to run at any moment? Do you have good eyesight? And can you memorize rules and other stuff easily? They were weird questions. Some I didn't see why they were important at all. I just answered truthfully and he said, all right, you got the job. Here are the papers you need to read over, and you'll be all set. 
Your first shift will start tonight at 12.30 a.m. Make sure to read the paper that is titled Rules. It is very important, he said in a serious way. I got up and walked out of the building. I hopped in my car and set the binder he had given me on the seat next to me, and I drove home. When I got home, I took out all the papers and started reading them. It wasn't too unusual, just normal procedures and regulations. But then, the paper he told me that was the most important one had caught my attention. Rules. Make sure to follow these rules to the fullest, and you'll be safe while working. Follow them no matter how dumb or fake they sound. I glanced through the rules and thought, what the fuck are these dumbass rules for? I started reading through them soon after. Rule 1. When you arrive at the warehouse, you will be accompanied by two cars that will start following you at the entrance of the parking lot. Ignore them and walk into the main office and don't look back. If you look back and you see figures getting out of the car to the right, lock the door to the office and call us. Rule 2. Once you get into the building, the lights will be off. Turn them on quickly and make your way to the locker room. Make sure to turn on the light in there too. Rule 3. Once you're dressed and ready to head and make your first rounds around the warehouse, go into the security office and check camera 9. This rule is rare, so you don't have to really worry about it. But if you do see something in it, Grab the hammer that is located to the right of the monitors and smash it. Rule 4. At 1.30 a.m., exactly make your way back to the security office. It doesn't matter if you're in the middle of something, just go. Once in there, you'll see a little girl on cam 3. Turn on and off that monitor five times and it should be gone. Rule 5. At 2.30 a.m., you will hear a loud banging coming from one of the doors that go into the main floor. Quickly run up to it and bang back on it three times and it should stop after a few seconds. Rule 6. While patrolling the basement, do not look up. Keep your eyes low. If you do look up, run. Rule 7. If you see a tall man with a wide smile coming towards you, don't look into his eyes. He will keep asking you. Just close your eyes and wait 60 seconds and he should leave you alone. If you do look into his eyes by any chance, he will take your soul. Rule 8. If you hear a scratching noise coming from above you, do not look up. Rule 9. If you see the little girl you had seen on the camera and she asks you to help her find her mom, tell her, Not right now, sweetie. I'll help you later. Once you say this, she will disappear. Rule 10. At 4.30 a.m., exactly descend back down to the basement. Once down there, you will notice it has completely changed. Walk up the stairs until you reach a shrine. Light the candles with the lighter that will be sitting next to them and clap and bow your head for 10 seconds. Rule 11. At 5.30 a.m., make your way back to your office and lock the door behind you. This is where you will spend the rest of your shift until 6.30 a.m. If you hear loud banging noises coming from the door and voices asking you to open it, ignore them and wait until your shift is over. What the fuck is this? Is this some kind of joke? I thought to myself in anger. This must be a joke to scare the new guy, I said. I put down the notes and went to take a nap, not really paying those dumbass rules any mind. I woke up to my alarm blaring. I turned it off and looked at the time 12 a.m. I got up and got ready for work, heading out the door. I heard that same noise I had heard the previous night, the tapping noise at my window. I had to be at work soon, so I just turned back around and drove off. Forgetting all about the rules, I got there late. As I was pulling into the parking lot, I could see cars parked on either side of the entrance. That is weird. It is a bit late to be sitting out here, I thought to myself in confusion. 
I drove past them, and before I knew it, their headlights flipped on, and they started to tail me. I tried to get a good look at them through my rearview mirror and saw nothing. I quickly looked behind me and they were there again. What the fuck is going on? I said, frightened. I can't see them through my mirrors. I pulled up next to the office parking lot and stopped my car. They stopped with me. Being a couple of feet behind my car, I started to get upset and I was about to get out and start screaming at them when I remembered rule one. When you arrive, two cars will follow you, ignore them, and proceed to walk into the building. This isn't funny, I thought to myself as I got out of my car. They are taking this too far, this little dumb prank of theirs. I started to walk up to the cars when the door swung open and a large white creature hopped out. I froze for a second and then started running to the door of the main office, opening the door and slamming it shut in one motion. Bagging erupted from the other side of the door. What the fuck is going on here that looked nothing like a human? I said to myself as I held the door from coming off the hinges. I quickly flipped on the light and dialed the company number that was on the paper of rules. A lady answered, and I started screaming, there is something trying to kill me. I had a million questions running through my head at this point. Stay calm, sir. Let me guess you broke rule one, she said while giggling. This isn't funny. What is that thing outside the door, that white tall creature? I said while trying to hold the door shut. It's the watchers. They keep the building safe from anyone trying to get in after hours. They don't know you so they are trying to keep the building safe. She said, Just wait a few minutes, and they will get bored and return back to the entrance. She told me, But I can't hold this door any longer. I'm afraid they will bust in if I try to walk away. Sir, just calm down. That door can hold a lot more than you think. She said in a more serious tone now. I walked away from the door and the phone hung up. The banging stopped after a while, and I slumped onto the ground. This can't be happening. This can't be real. I said to myself in an attempt to calm myself down. I read back through the rules and decided after what I had just experienced I had to follow them. A bunch of thoughts was still running through my head like, what were those things? Was the lady lying to me about them? because if they were some kind of guard system, wouldn't they have told them that I worked there and what exactly was my job here? I sighed and walked into the locker room turning on the light. I got dressed for work. My shift was just about to start. I grabbed the rules and read them again to make sure I had them down. Whatever was going on here was true. I walked out of the locker room and checked out the barred window adjacent to the main door. The cars were gone. I had to start my shift, so I stepped into the security room and checked camera 9. There was nothing to be seen, so I began to make my rounds. The aisles of the warehouse were quiet and dark, almost as if I was walking down a path in the forest at night. But still, I had a feeling in my chest that I was not alone. I strolled into the second aisle of the warehouse. It was littered with crates and packages from the right and to the left of me. I shined my flashlight onto the tall shelves, making sure no one was hiding in them. When I heard a noise coming from behind me, it sounded like footsteps rapidly approaching. I darted around and shined my dim flashlight down the long, dark aisle. There was nothing there. I froze for a second trying to make out my surroundings, and then began back down the aisle. I was making my way to my fourth aisle when my phone began to ring. I recoiled from the sound since the dark atmosphere of the warehouse had me on the edge of my toes. I pulled it out of my pocket, still ringing. I looked down at the caller ID. It read, Brother. 
a flush of fear and anxiety rushed through my entire body. My brother passed away 13 years ago from a lung disease. I quickly answered the phone and shouted, This isn't funny anymore. Who is this? I didn't get an answer, only heavy breathing on the other end. It sounded like whatever was on the other side of the line had just finished running a marathon. I sat there waiting for a response for the following minute, and then the phone disconnected. I just wanted to get the hell out of this horrible place, but I couldn't. The fear of those things that guarded the gates kept me in here. I was trapped. I took a last glance at my phone. It read 1.30 a.m. Oh shit, I said to myself, thinking of rule four. I quickly sprinted back to my office and slammed the door shut, locking it, and flipped to cam three. My heart began to race, and I got goosebumps all up and down my arms at the sight. There was a girl. She appeared around the age of four or five, standing there holding an old beat-up teddy bear. I swiftly turned on and off the camera five times. Each time I noticed that devilish smile she was making. Once I had finished, she was gone. I sat down in the chair gasping for air after all the running I had done. I collected myself a moment later and returned to the main floor and began my rounds once more. I finished up my rounds of the first part of the building rather quickly and made my way down to the basement. As I walked down the stairs leading to the basement, I sensed a change in the atmosphere. It almost felt like I was being watched, and the feeling was coming from right above me. Rule 6. While patrolling the basement, do not look up. Keep your eyes low. If you do look up, run! I remembered, and I kept my eyes low. The hallways of the basement were tattered and dusty. It looks like no one has been down here in decades. Cracks on the floor and walls, and ancient books and crates scattered around. It was completely pitch dark. The only source of light I had was my flashlight, which only lit up around three or four feet in front of me. As I wandered there, I felt a constant urge to look up. It was always in the back of my mind all the way through. Look up, look up, look up. No, I told myself. I was making my way back towards the stairs after I had finished up my rounds in the basement when I rounded the first corner. I froze. What I saw in front of me was the little girl I had seen on the camera. She was standing there with a big wide smile and holding the same teddy bear, but I could see it much clearer now. It appeared normal for the most part. Besides, there were a set of human eyes and fingernails as claws. I almost wanted to vomit at the sight. Hey, mister, can you help me find my mommy? She said. Her voice didn't sound human at all. It sounded demonic and evil. I worked up enough courage to yell at her from the frustration and fear I had been through tonight. No, I can't. I'm busy right now, little girl. As I said this, she began to transform into an enormous goat-like creature and said, You broke the rule! She had an impossibly wide smile, much bigger than before. In a quick motion, she picked me up and threw me against the wall next to us. I noticed multiple pops in my chest and back and coughed up blood on impact. I then grunted in pain. I broke rule nine. I blacked out. As I began to wake up, I felt a sharp pain in my side and back. As I struggled to sit up, I remembered what had happened. I broke rule nine and that thing attacked me. As I got up, I felt like I was about to pass out again. I checked my phone and it said 2.38 a.m. I had been out for around an hour. I began to make my way up the stairs, holding my chest and back. As I got up and walked through the door, I heard a loud banging coming from across the warehouse. I took out my bloody, crumpled up rule sheet and read Rule 5. At 2.30 a.m., 
you will hear a loud banging coming from one of the doors that go into the main floor. Quickly run up to it and bang back on it three times, and it should stop after a few seconds. I tried to run, but I couldn't. The pain in my chest and back was too much for me to handle, so I slowly advanced towards the sound. As I got up to it, it sounded much more intense, like it was getting more frantic by the second. I banged on it three times, but it didn't stop. It began banging harder and harder, until there was a huge dent in the gigantic metal door. I slumped over onto the door, not caring anymore when out of nowhere it stopped. I began to cry and asked myself why I even came here in the first place. Was it because I wanted the money? Or simply wanted a new start in a new job? I sat there for what seemed like 30 minutes, and I told myself, if I wanted to get the hell out of here, I had to finish up my tasks. I got up and made my way to the second part of the building. As I got up to the door, a foul odor came from the building. It was the worst smell I had ever smelt in my life. I threw up onto the cold, hard floor below me, leaving a puddle of vomit. It smelled like death, like something had been rotting in here for months. I plugged my nose with my fingers and used my other hand to hold the flashlight. Still, in intense pain, I stumbled down the first aisle. After finishing it, I went to the next, then the next, and so on. Once I finished my rounds, I glanced at the clock. 3.26 a.m. I then made my way to the last part of the building. While walking there, I heard a strange scratching noise coming from above me. I stopped and froze in fear. I looked up to see what the noise was. I wish I didn't have. Two large bright red eyes were looming above me. I started running, adrenaline rushing through me. I had forgotten all about my injuries. I was about to get to the door when a tall man rounded the corner. He had a red suit on and dark dress pants. I stared up at his face by instinct, and what I saw gave me goosebumps. His face was blank and pale. The only facial feature he had was a long, pointy tongue coming from where his mouth was supposed to be. I stopped for a second and began to run once more. I had two things chasing me. I got up to the door and slammed it shut, locking it and loud banging erupted from the other side. I looked around and spotted an exit. I gotta get the hell out of here, I said to myself in an exhausted and painful tone. I rushed over to the door, swung it open, and continued out. The humid air hit me like a train as I bolted towards my car. Then the two cars that had followed me into the parking lot turned on their headlights and began approaching me. I got to my car and checked my pocket. My heart sunk through my chest, and I realized something. I had left my keys in my locker, in the locker room. I ran up to the door trying to open it, but it was locked. It was still locked from when I had locked it earlier tonight. I turned around and rushed into the woods next to the building. I ran for ten minutes until I stopped to catch my breath. I gasped for air, and the pain in my chest was so intense that I wanted to vomit. I needed treatment because I was losing a lot of blood from a deep cut I had on my lower back. I limped to the local emergency room, which was a 20-minute walk from here. I arrived at the emergency room, stepped in, and collapsed on the hard-tiled floor. I could hear running and screaming all around me as my eyes closed and my vision faded to black. I woke up to the sight of a bright light shining from the ceiling. It took a moment for my eyes to adapt to the room. I was in a hospital room lying down on the bed with all kinds of IVs and tubes sticking in me. I heard the sound of a woman saying, He's awake! A huge crowd stormed into the room. 
They began asking all kinds of questions as I zoned out. Reality finally set in, and I remembered what had happened at that damn warehouse. I couldn't tell them what happened. No one would believe me. So I made up a story. I said I was jumped while taking a midnight stroll around town. The police showed up and took my statement. It's been a few months since all this has happened. I still have nightmares of that damned warehouse. But at night, I still hear that tapping. And once I got a good look at what caused the noise, it was the tall man I had encountered at the warehouse. 